Hello Cougars of 2014-2015. I hope you had a great summer and I hope you're ready to kick off Common Core Math Math Mathematics 8. Um, we're going to have a lot of uh, good learning that takes place this year and we're going to start off by doing a little review on squaring and cubing. Let's get out our homework assignment and look at a few practice problems. Okay, ladies and gentlemen and parents, we are uh, taking a look at our homework assignment here, which we're going to be doing some squaring and cubing. And when you hear square, that simply means you're raising um, a number or integer to the second power. And cubing would simply mean you're raising it to the third power. And, and, and raising something, let's take a look at number number three. We'll start off with, with the homework assignment. It says, first of all, for one through eight, it says, square each number and then write in expanded form and finally simplify. So that's what we're going to do. They give us the number, uh, or I should say the integer, negative 2 um, for, for number 3 here, and we need to square it. So that means we're going to raise it to the second power. And if we raise it to the second power, that simply means that the integer negative 2 is going to be a factor twice. So negative 2 to the second power, negative 2 squared, simply means negative 2 times negative 2. Now you should remember from last year that anytime you have two negative numbers and you multiply two negatives, um, the, the rule is two negatives will equal a positive. So they kind of cancel each other out. So a negative two times a negative two will be a positive four. Okay, let's take a look at number seven. Now this time the integer that they give us, it's actually a fraction, is two fifths. So you were supposed to square two fifths. So you take two-fifths and you raise the whole thing, the whole fraction, to the second power. So, and when we raise something to the second power, that means two-fifths is going to be a factor twice. So I take two-fifths times two-fifths. And when we multiply fractions, this is might be a little more review too, it's just numerator times numerator. So the two times two is 4, and then denominator times denominator, which is 5 times 5, which gives us 25. And you should always look at your fraction and say, can I simplify or reduce that? And 4 and 25 do not have any common factors, so this is in simplest form. And there's our two sample problems that we did together. Now let's move down to numbers 9 through 16. 9 through 16, um, and now we're cubing. It says cube each number and then write in expanded form and finally simplify. So we'll, we'll take a look at number 10 together. The number that they give us, which is an integer, a negative integer, is negative 3, and we need to cube that. So what does that look like? That looks like, oops, let's change colors here. That would look like a negative 3 raised to the third power, which simply means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. And I know that a negative times a negative, we looked up there, it's going to give us a positive outcome. It's going to have a positive product. So negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 9. But then I take that positive 9 and multiply it by negative 3, and I know that a positive number multiplied or divided for that factor by a negative number, a, a positive times a negative, is going to give us a negative answer and 9 times 3 is negative 27. So the answer to negative 3 cubed is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. That's what it means. And when we do the calculations, we get a negative 27. Now let's take a look at this fraction of 4 tenths. Okay. Did I say fraction? It's a well, when it's a decimal, it's written in decimal form, but when you read a decimal properly, you're actually saying a fraction. And when you say a fraction that's a base 10 number, you're also saying a, a decimal. Well, and we'll, we'll review that later. But we have negative, sorry, we have um, 4 tenths, and we need to cube that. So that is 4 tenths to the third power. What does that mean? That means 4 tenths times... 4 tenths times 4 tenths, okay? Our exponent here tells us how many times the base will be a factor, or we multiply it times itself. 
And when I know that a negative 4, or sorry, I keep saying negative, a 4 tenths times 4 tenths is, well, no, 4 times 4 is 16. Okay? And I have a de one decimal place here, and I have another decimal place here. So I have two decimal places together in this multiplication problem. So that means I need to move my decimal point 1, 2 places to the left. So 4 tenths times 4 tenths equals 16 hundredths times one more four tenths. Okay, so I'm going to first treat anytime you multiply decimals. If you remember from many moons ago, um, you just treat it like a normal multiplication problem, but then at the end you have to keep track of the decimals. So I'm going to go four times six will give me 24, and I carry the two. Then four times one is four plus the two is 64. And how many decimal places do I have? Well, I have one here, and then I have one, two here. So all together I have three. One, two, three. So I need to move my decimal place one, two, three places over. And in this empty spot, or place, I put a placeholder there, um, I have a zero. So my answer is 64 thousandths, 64 thousandths. So 4 tenths to the third power, which is 4 tenths times 4 tenths times 4 tenths, will give me 64 thousandths. Okay, boys and girls, I hope that was helpful, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow in class. Just keep in mind with those two challenge problems, if you're so bold as to try them, you have mixed numbers, and before you square or cube those mixed numbers, you're going to want to change them to improper fractions. That's my little hint. Well, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.